Good morning. Welcome to Schofield Bible Fellowship. And uh, my name is uh, Mike Mackey, Pastor. And I'm uh, speaking to you today on the subject of parenting. A couple of verses of scripture I might show, share with you and uh, show you some principles and provoke you to thinking. Uh, because uh, each life situation uh, that's in the body of Christ is unique. And there are things that one individual needs that the other one either has already or uh, is not a problem for them. So it's, uh, and so this is going to be kind of general. But I hope uh, helpful, encouraging you today to be praying for those that are parents, um, because that impacts the next generation directly. Okay, let's turn to our notes. I'll move it up here so we can see the words. Today is called Father's Day. It focuses our attention on parenting. And in Proverbs 22, verse 6, we read, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Some commentaries say this is not a promise of success, but more a warning that if, if, if followed can have good results. Either way, uh, the point is made, and, and an important point, uh, and, and let's examine it in more detail. We have free will, which is capable of messing up our lives by poor choices. So let's see and focus on the process of getting and gaining good choices. Train up. Connect. To narrow. Put this other glasses on so that it's not so hard for me to do. There we go. This word is also translated dedicate. So it's pointing on a ongoing process to narrow something. The focus of the narrowing is the recognizing of good life choices of an individual child in emphasize the idea of a specific way. The words, the way, Derek, a road as trodden. This is the footpath that matches the individual's course of activity in order to arrive at a certain destination. A prayerful attitude of evaluating of your child should be seriously embraced. So you're combining these two words, train up the and the emphasis on the way. Points out a narrow path. Not much option there. It's focusing on the intention of the one doing the narrowing. We have an opportunity to do that in children's lives. 
And that process continues after arriving at adulthood. So a prayerful attitude of evaluation of your child should be seriously embraced. Point number three, he should go. I came across a list that Susanna Wesley used in raising her 17 children. 17. Anyway, she must have been a busy lady, I would assume. <laughs> 17 kids. She at least had good intentions. All parents make lists, whether they intend to or not. They're in a mental list that you make up to deal with every kind of different situation. And some of them are pretty good choices and some are not. Oh, please don't use this list. I'm not saying that this is the thing to do. Uh, there are some values in it, but I just wanted to use it as an illustration. There are flaws in it, I think. There are things that need to be expanded. Um, it may be to do with her spiritual condition, which I do not know where she was coming from. He, she points on their number one objective is subdue self-will in a child and thus work together with God to save his soul. Her second principle of action was teach him to pray as soon as he can speak. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that one. Um, I pray with them. I remember praying with my kids. I do that. I pray with them. But it, it is really easy for them to get the wrong impression that they have a relationship with God. That they need a relationship with God. Anyway. Number three, give him nothing if he cries. I thought this was an interesting way to try to deal with the problem. If he cries, he doesn't get it. <laughs> and only when he, well, what is good for him if he asked for it politely. To, number four, to prevent lying, punish it. No fault that is freely confessed, but never allow a, re a rebellious, sinful act to be to go unnoticed. Number five, commend, reward, good behavior. And I think that's important. Strictly observe all promises you have made to your child. It's funny how they remember those things that slip our mind. And that was important to them. And so I think that's wise in your maintaining a, a, a working relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. A dry throat today. An observation the proverb can be understood to train a child along the lines of their talents rather than forcing them into something that does not fit them. And I and I lean the, heavily on that observation. Uh, I think that's true, that you need to help them to attain 
goals that fit who they are. <clears throat> Bring your child to an understanding of salvation is obviously vital. When he is old, the test of success is time. Number five, he will not depart from it. The it is a narrow path. It is a path that fits them. That's the objective. If we supply the proper direction for their development, we can gain fellowship with your child as they become adults. They recognize that you gave them opportunity to flourish and that wins them over. Your efforts to develop an, an appetite for the right path uh, can provide for their good decision in making. Page two. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. First of all, Paul focuses on the children. He's in a practical section of the book, and he's encouraging spirituality. So I'm going to make an assumption that children, in this case, are the believing children. They are saved by the context. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. As believers, they could do this. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And that promise in the honoring of their parents is coming from the Old Testament scriptures, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. It'll give you wisdom. in your life here on earth. And then we'll focus our attention in verse four, since we're talking about fathers. And you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So number one, the first three verses are written to believing children. The context is talking about their spirit, about the spiritual life. Parents have the privilege of training and admonishing. Number two, and you fathers, the father is to be focused on is to be focused on his emotions. It is important for the fathers to be in control of their emotions. This can become a spiritual issue. Do not provoke your children to wrath is an interesting translation. In the original Greek text, the word wrath does not exist. Yet, they don't put it in italics for a reason. It's used to explain the idea that do not provoke your children. That what you provoked into by your actions causes them to have a problem with provoking them to, uh, to themselves. 
see, uh, we are always in a situation of being an example before our children. Whether we like it or not, whether we're thinking about it or not, it's happening. Number three, do not provoke your children to wrath. The word provoke, Pororizzo means intensified anger alongside. Wrath it is also Parenzo. and is not in the Greek text. It is repeated in an attempt to clarify the English meaning. The example of, of the father leads the child to imitate. We lead by example, and this would be inappropriate. Another verse that speaks about anger is in, found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. A div, uh, a, the base word for the word that we've looked at, provoke, is used. Arizo, to provoke or enrage, be angry. A challenge to be angry. And do not sin. There is a justification for this feeling. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. So this intensified anger alongside view. It's like your partner. You can't chase them away. You're having difficulty. And, and so it is indicated by the sun setting that you're trying to get this out of your uh, having active force on you if in one day you and we'll look at what we should do about it in a moment. Small a, be angry. Some translate this, be angry with yourself. That's an interesting idea. That translation would seem to indicate anger with one's own thinking, own words, or one's deeds. Westcott makes this comment, the first keenness of the sense of provocation must not be cherished. He said, you're, normally your anger is heightened at the beginning, and as you think on it, you, you, the emotion is laid more aside. So he... Uh, he, he, he the verse is saying we need to be angry. Be angry. We need to have convictions and be uh, willing to stand on those convictions. But emotion won't ac accomplish it. Normally, emotion confuses the issue and draws in a, a, a reaction that is not uh, beneficial. There should be things that upset us. However, they must be handled carefully. Small b, sin not. The sin nature will take advantage 
of this emotional reaction. Small letter C, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. This care should be cast upon the Lord for he is already taking care of you. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. Okay, first Peter. And we'll start with verse five. First Peter chapter five, verse five. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Uh, humility is an important ingredient as you're humbling, you're humbling yourself before the Lord. God has wisdom that you do not have. He has insight that you do not, do not have. He understands what, exactly what's going on, what's coming down, what's going to happen, what the repercussions are. And we have to be willing to humble ourselves so we listen to God. For God resists the proud. And if we don't humble ourselves, he won't be there for you. Uh, that's his father on his father's list. His, as a heavenly father, he says, I, I'm, I tell you, uh, I resist the proud. And those that are not willing to humble, I... Uh, Resist. But I do give grace to the humble. The Christian life is a life of humility, of constantly trusting the Lord with all your heart, not leaning to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledging him, and he will direct your path on that narrow road. First Peter chapter five, verse six. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Part of your thinking that will be trans Oh, that will be the focus of your attention will be that God has the ability to deal with the situation, no matter what it is. His hands are mighty. That he may exalt you in due time. There is a point of uh, exaltation that he is going to provide you if you're willing to humble. In the humbling process, verse 7 comes into play. Casting all your care upon him. Uh, 
we normally have two lists of this. We have the list of things that we think that we can handle. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the list that we figure we can handle so we can bring those to God. So we divide this up. But this is what the Father has to say. He says, now, let's check you out and see if you really are humbling yourself to me. Are you humbling me? Are you humbling me before me? Okay, this is what I'm asking of you. I want you to cast all. I want to cast all, you to cast all your cares upon him, me. And he gives a reason. For I am already taking care of you. That's what the Greek is saying. I've been taking care of you from day one. Verse 8, be sober, think seriously, this is important for you to be sober, be vigilant, on guard. For you have spiritual enemies that want to destroy your choice. Destroy the, the choice that would be good for you. That would narrow your pathway. That would cause you to be directed toward a goal that God has for your life. Sometimes we don't even know or have a clue that God wants to use us in a certain way or situation. But if we're willing to humble ourselves before him, and this is what the parents should be training their children to do, educating them concerning this, you can't make them do it. But you can implore that they would consider it. But being an example of it is the most important form of teaching uh, that can be had. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan wants to discourage you, disappoint you, cause you to doubt God, and move you in a wrong direction because you've got a problem, whatever it might be. So you have a choice to make. He's going to be there. The scriptures indicate we have a sin problem, we've got a world system problem, and we have a Satan problem. And so we have to make a choice, and the choice is to resist. Don't go along with the temptation, those thoughts that enter your mind of questioning the character of God. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, in the promises of God that you're placing your confidence in. You go to the exceeding great and precious promises, knowing this built, this, this humbling process is built on know, knowable principles, knowing that the same sufferings 
are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Every believer is going through some sort of situation that they need to be humbling themselves. Your problem is not unique to you. Having problems is not unique. But this formula will work. But may the God of all grace, undeserved favor, and that's what God wants to shower upon you in your life situation. But you have to be willing to narrow your way, your road. You have to be willing to allow him to guide you on that path to the destination he has for you. Who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. This is going to give glory to God, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, if we do this. After you have suffered a while, perfect, mature you, establish you, stabilize you, that you have a foundation that you're, you're built on, strengthened, and you're settled. You're not tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, but you're stabilized. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's take a look at our notes again. Point number four, bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So if you don't do what Peter was talking about in 1 Peter 5, you won't know those things. You won't be able to. You can't teach something you don't know. You can't explain the applications unless you've been willing to allow God to apply them in your life. And I think the Lord intentionally allows problems to happen in our lives for that very reason, trying to focus a little bit to activate an opportunity for us to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, it's not just anybody's training he's talking about. So, yeah, you can learn a lot of lessons about raising kids and different things. You have Susan, Susan's list there we can look at. But there's other people that have written books on these kind of things, and you can fill your brain with some of that stuff and it might be advantageous to you, the to life situations. But there's things that the Lord does that are personal and helpful. And so they have two words here that he's emphasizing. The first one is the verbal training the words, the word communication, pedia, education or training. 
This emphasizes the communication of information. Dads would have to know the scriptural principles that support the training. More than just even knowing about the principle or where it's located in the scripture, but know it in practice. And I'm a grandpa now, and I'm still learning. <laughs> and I'm still parenting in a different form, different format, different areas. But I love the interaction uh, with my kids that are parents now. And it's the fellowship you can have. I appreciate that. Letter C. And the admonition of the Lord. Nosia, calling attention to, that is by implication, mild rebuke or warning. Dads would have to know the scriptural principles that support the mild rebuke or warning in whatever area it might be. So to be a good parent, you need to be a good believer. And this thing applies to marriage and, you know, every relationship. And so uh, the critical part of spirituality is necessary. Let's go to back to the book of Ephesians. We still have a few minutes. We can um, Let's go to Ephesians chapter four. And a part of that process is you being here today. And being an example of that before our kids and recognizing the importance of the gifts that we have. And uh, the pastor, teacher, in verse 11, is, and he gave he himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave some to be apostles and prophets. They provide the New Testament scriptures. Some evangelists, the gospelers, and some pastors and teachers. The correct construction and grammatical rule that goes with this says to uh, one individual having two um, gifts that are two qualities. Shepherding, that's the word pastor, and teacher. For the equipping of the saints for the work of their ministry. And a part of that is parenting. If you're a, a parent, that process is necessary. And it's applying spirituality. And in turn, the result is, is the edifying of the body of Christ. As saints see their ministry, what God is trying to put in front of them today, being aware of what God has led you into 
has opportunities in it? And are you willing to take and be proactive in allowing the Lord to teach you and to guide you? Isn't it funny? We want this, our kids to do it, but we are stubborn ourselves in doing it. And it's, a, it's all good, good and fine for someone else to do it, but I'm, am I going to do it? That's another question. <laughs> for the edifying of the body of Christ, it's, it's better when, when you and I do it, the body collectively has benefits. The objective, the ultimate objective for the group is verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. We are, we know what kind of road we're on. It's been very narrowed by the scriptures. It's a path to be walked on. And we, in, in the process of narrowing, we come to the full experiential knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man. The body of Christ is functional as we are functional in doing the will of God to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ, the combination of the Father, Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the body, and the believers in the dispensation of the grace of God. Every believer is contributing to the whole. Verse 14. We have an, another word for children here. <laughs> I get kind of like this one. Napias. And the definition of it, of the word, it means an inarticulate babbler. So it speaks of a child who says the Google Gaga. Attempts to speak, but you can't figure out what they're saying. But no matter how uh, emphatic they might be. And I get to enjoy grandchildren that are doing that. But God says, uh, we do not want to have, uh, have our Christian life spent on being in a unarticulated condition, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. We are controlled by world system ideology. The stuff we're picking up in the world in our lives becomes the things that we're running our. our our life situation with and our, our gift is not being uh, used to the full, but it's being sidetracked by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. The unbelievers are under Satan's influence and his corruption of truth is very deceiving. So instead of deceitfulness, we speak the truth. Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up mature in all things 
nothing is left untouched in God's program. And you may want to make it your own special project for you yourself to do. But God says, no, 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 no. That's not the way it's going to be. I'll keep on prodding you. Growing up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplieth, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so in the process of having children, they provided a lot of maturing for me. Sevenfold. You're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy reminding me. <laughs> so let us pray for one another because we're in this together, and what I'm going through benefits you, what you're going through is benefiting me. It's all good. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God, which is alive and powerful. That it critiques our thoughts and intentions. You welcome us to the throne of grace that we can cast our cares upon you because you do care for us and you have answers that you will lead us to down this path that you continually narrow and specify what direction we should go in our daily activities and you prod us in our emotions so that we become mature in handling emotion and realizing that all things are working together for good to them that are loving you and that they need, that we need father to put an emphasis on what you put an emphasis on and that we'd be in love with you and caring about being what you would have us to be in every life situation. Bless your word to our hearts. Draw us heavenward. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.